98, 99, 100. All right, now that I've blasted my biceps, let's talk about the new weightlifting crime thriller, Love Lies Bleeding, which is coming to limited theaters, LA and New York on March 8th, 2024, and then opening nationwide on March 15th, 2024. There's a new weightlifting crime love story uh, that is co-written and directed by Rose Glass. My hot take is, I think you should watch it later. There was a lot I did like about this movie. I thought it was interesting. I thought it was a very kind of different film. Uh, I love the cast. I love kind of the scenarios and the cinematography, but uh, I didn't really love how it progressed. It felt like it went a little slower than expected and the ending really kind of went off the rails. So I enjoyed a lot. Hey, look, I like weightlifting. I enjoyed the weightlifting angle as well, but my recommendation is to wait for this movie to come to streaming or on demand or something like that. But I'm going to tell you a little about the film, a few things I like, a few things I didn't like, and then really quickly go into the ending. So as you can imagine, there will be spoilers in the ending section. If you don't know what happened to this movie, I would turn it off when I get there. Before that, I'll keep it vague. I'll keep it spoiler free. I'll let you know when I get to those spoilers. So Love Lies Bleeding tells the love story of Lou and Jackie. Uh, Lou is a reclusive gym manager she manages a gym in this small town jackie is someone who is kind of wandering through uh, she's very into fitness very into her physique she actually wants to go all the way to vegas to compete in this competition uh, these two meet kind of randomly and then quickly start a relationship that entangles both of their lives and the lives of other people in the town so does their love survive do they get through this well you'll have to watch the movie to find out so things i liked about this film the first I love the sound and the music. I wasn't sure if this movie was going to be like a happy movie or a sinister movie or somewhere in between. The music and the sound definitely let you know from the start this is going to be a more sinister film. It has this kind of like eerie, sinister undertone to a lot of it. Some of the sound effects feel a little otherworldly. Uh, it feels like something bad is going to happen, especially at the start, which is good. It was good for me to know at the start that something bad was going to happen because bad stuff does definitely happen in this movie. The second thing I love... I love the cinematography. It has a really, really great like cinematic style. A lot of the film takes place at night and there are some really nice low light shots, some really nice use of lighting and, and low light to kind of sell the story and, and also to give you an uneasy sense so that you know that something bad will happen pretty soon. Uh, the third thing I love, I love the practical effects. There aren't a ton of them. There are not a ton of practical effects in this, but they are really, really well done. The few that they do have look real, look kind of grotesque, look really, really well done. Um, and I... You know, I always love when a film uses practical effects, and this one did so perfectly. And the last thing I loved, I love the cast. You've got Kristen Stewart, you got Jenna Malone, you've got Kitty O'Brien playing uh, Jackie, the like weightlifting drifter, and then you also have Dave Franco and Ed Harris playing very, very different roles, very kind of out there roles. Uh, I loved the entire cast; it was a really kind of fun group, and I like that they, Dave Franco and Ed Harris got to play some very kind of different characters than you're used to seeing them in. Uh, so, all that being said. Things I didn't love as much. The first, the film is a little bit slow. It's a good story, but it develops a little slowly, especially at the start. I mean, it lays a ton of groundwork at the start, um, but it doesn't really get going until maybe about the back half of the film. I was definitely looking at my watch through the first hour just to see kind of how long I had gone through. So I do love that it lays a ton of groundwork, but I do feel like it takes a little bit long to kind of get to the big meat of the story. The second thing I didn't love as much, I didn't love the ending. It really kind of goes off the rails at the end. It really kind of like gets a little bit out there at the ending and also feels like some of the uh, big decisions are, I don't know, kind of explained away, which felt a little bit strange also. So I'm not going to get into the spoilers here. I'll go into it in the ending section, but just know this film kind of left me with a sour taste in my mouth because I didn't really love the way that it kind of concluded this interesting story that I developed. So all that being said, Love Lies Bleeding premieres in New York and LA on March 8, 2024, and then comes nationwide on March 15, 2024. I think you should watch it later. I think you should wait for it to come to streaming or on demand. But if you do check it out, let me know what you liked and didn't like. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to hear them. And I'm going to go into the ending right now. So if you don't know what happened to this movie, I would turn it off because there will be spoilers. So Lou is a, is a gym manager. Jackie is passing through. She wants to kind of... Uh, compete in this bodybuilding competition in vegas but she needs to work out and so she starts working out at this gym that lou manages now they very quickly develop a relationship they, they get very very entangled uh jackie basically moves in with lou the first day because she doesn't have a place to stay she's a drifter so she doesn't have a place to stay she stays with lou they get very very close now lou also helps jackie with her competition training she starts giving her steroids because lou's in the gym she knows all about steroids she knows who to get them from and kind of knows the uh, you know what dosage to take and whatnot so she helps jackie in her dream and jackie kind of gives lou this companionship that she has been seeking for a long time but 
Lou's life is a little bit complicated. Her family is very complicated. Her father is this crime lord, this person that is a, he owns a gun range, but he also does a lot of crime throughout the city. It seems like he has his fingers in a lot of different buckets. One of the things it seems like he's doing is smuggling in guns. I'm sure there are other things as well. Um, and his son-in-law, JJ, played by Dave Franco, uh, also has an interesting relationship in this. He is married uh, to Lou's sister, and he is a terrible husband. He he beats Lou's sister, Beth, uh, regularly. She uh, won't leave him, but he is terrible to her. He cheats on her. He beats her. He is just not a good person. Um, and the only reason that Lou is still here, she would have left a long time ago because she doesn't like her dad. Uh, because of it seems like something he made her do when she was younger. She doesn't like uh, her brother-in-law, but she loves her sister Beth. And so she is there to kind of watch over Beth, make sure that JJ doesn't do anything bad to Beth. Now, now eventually, Lou and Jackie and Beth and JJ all have dinner together. And it's this very awkward dinner, partly because uh, Jackie and JJ had met before. Uh, JJ had slept with Jackie the very first night that she was there. Uh, to, and she did that, I guess, to, to try to get a job so that she could find a place to stay. So she slept with JJ and that got her a job at uh, Lou's dad's gun range. So when they all have dinner, it's very awkward because Jackie doesn't want to talk to JJ. Uh, Beth doesn't really talk much and Lou hates JJ. So, she, so it's just kind of this awkward family dinner now. Eventually, JJ goes to the bathroom and Lou follows him, confronts him about uh, beating Beth. He, he can, she can see that there's like some new bruises on her face. And that's when JJ drops the bomb to Lou that uh, he slept with Jackie. But this caused a fight between Lou and Jackie on the way home. They eventually make up for it. But on the flip side, JJ goes, I guess, ballistic on Beth. And so Beth ends up in the hospital later. She is really, really beaten up. This is where I mentioned the practical effects. Like she looks swollen. She looks hurt. It is a, a very kind of like striking uh, use of practical effects to see what had happened to her. And uh, Lou is just upset, but she stays with Jackie that night now. But uh, Lou is, you know, livid. She's talking about how she wants to, to kill JJ, but she stays with Beth that night. But Jackie decides to go and take matters in her own hands. She drives to JJ's house, waits for him when he gets home. And then when he gets home, she beats him and like slams his head against the table so hard it like cracks open his jaw. And this is more practical effects that look really good. Like the jaw is like hanging off uh, when this is done. Part of this, it seems, is probably because Jackie is now on steroids. So she is kind of like hyper um, angry, like hyper emotional. And so she does what she thinks that Lou wants. She kills JJ uh, and then stays there. Now, Eventually, Lou leaves the hospital. She is going home and she doesn't see her car. So she has to take a, a, a taxi, I guess, at this point. And on her way back, she sees her car parked at JJ's house. She goes in and finds Jackie there and finds her like dead brother in law as well. Now, she is upset about this because, you know, she always talked about how she wanted to kill JJ, but I think she wanted to do it maybe a little bit more discreetly. This could cause problems. Now, like we know, Lou is from a crime family. So she apparently kind of knows what to do. So her plan is to roll up JJ dump him in this spot that uh, that she knows about because that's where her dad dumps the bodies that he deals with. They get moving, they get driving. Uh, the plan seems like it could be perfect, except Lou is seen by someone that she knows, this person named Daisy, who they've had an on and off again relationship, sees them as they're driving. And unfortunately for Lou, she has now been spotted during this whole thing. Now when they get to the spot, Lou dumps the body and JJ's car in this ravine and then sets it on fire. Why would she set it on fire, you ask? Well, she knows that the smoke will cause people to come and see it and eventually the police will get there and they will find both JJ's body, his car, but then also the things that her dad has been doing, the bodies that he has dumped there. And she thinks that that will connect him to JJ's death and kind of like take the heat off of her and make it fall on her dad. Now, unfortunately for Lou, she has told Jackie that she needs to stay low to like, you know, act normal so that no one suspects anything. But Jackie can't do that. She, her decision making seems to be influenced by the steroids, which I didn't love. I didn't love how it seemed like they kind of like push this all on the steroids. Uh, she's ultra aggressive. She is kind of like seeing things. She's making kind of rash decisions. Maybe that's what happens when you do steroids. But to me, it felt like they were just pushing some of her poor decisions onto the steroids themselves rather than having like a deeper exploration of Jackie's backstory and maybe some of the darker things that she had done in the past to get where she was. I thought that would have been a, maybe a more natural progression, but uh, they kind of seem to push everything onto the steroids. So Jackie makes a rash decision. 
She goes to Vegas anyways to go compete, leaving Lou to deal with everything. Now, like she thought, her father was kind of like notified of what was happening, but he has paid off the police. So it doesn't seem like anything bad will happen to him, but he basically tells Lou that she has to do what he uh, tells her to do. Jackie goes to the competition. She tries to compete. She looks like she's doing well, but then partway through the competition, she starts to have like a flashback. She starts to have a vision and she vomits on the stage and then thinks that the uh, other competitors are laughing at her and so goes and beats one of them up. Uh, she gets arrested, goes in jail. Seems like Jackie's competition career is probably over. While she's in jail, someone shows up to uh, to get her out, and wouldn't you know it, it is Lou's father. He picks her up, he drives her back, and then seems to give her a proposition. And that proposition is to kill this witness that, uh, that has, can connect Lou to the crime. She has to go kill Daisy. She does that, but she shoots Daisy while Lou is talking to her. While Lou is, like, hanging out with her, it is this scene where they're just talking, and all of a sudden, like, splat a bunch of red hits Lou, uh, you turn around and Daisy is like, has a shot in her head and she's falling on the ground and there is Jackie with the gun. Jackie looks like she's going to shoot Lou, but she doesn't. She runs away. Uh, and now Lou has to deal with another dead body, uh, uh, another dead person. So after this, Lou calls her dad. Her dad, uh, you know, basically says like, look, I got rid of the witness that could connect you to the crime. Like I'm doing this for you. Uh, just sit still and let me handle this. You can't handle this. But he also now has to get rid of Jackie because Jackie is a, you know, accomplice to this whole crime. So he ties her up and, and kidnaps her. Now, Lou wants to free Jackie. She wants to kind of like be free of her father. So she threatens him. She says, you know, I will call the police and tell them everything that you've done. Like, you know, unless you let her free. Now, unfortunately for Lou, her dad is a seasoned criminal. He knows what has to happen. And he's like, basically, I wish you would have done that. Lo and behold, someone goes and tries to take out Lou. But somehow she is able to manage this. She ducks before she gets shot. She hides and then is able to fire back, take out the person that was taking her out. It is one of the corrupt cops uh, from the city. Lou realizes, you know, what is at stake now that her dad might actually have her killed. So she goes and confronts her dad. She gets there. She, uh, you know, gets confronted by Beth, who is not happy that her husband is dead. Even though he was a monster, she still loves him. And she is angry at Lou for doing that. Uh, Lou obviously did it for Beth. She doesn't really understand why Beth is upset with her. But she can't think about that now because she has to go save Jack. So she frees Jackie, tells Jackie to go run. Like, get out of there. Uh, you know, she's going to finish this up. Tell Jackie to go hide. Jackie goes and runs. But as she's trying to kind of confront her dad, her dad is a really good shot. He shoots her in the leg. She falls down and he basically goes up to her and is, you know, complaining about how she was ungrateful, how she didn't realize everything that he did. And Lou basically said, you know, believes that her dad had her mom killed right before her mom was going to go to the cops with information, kind of like what Lou is doing right now. She disappeared. Her dad denies this. He says, I didn't kill your mom. Like she ran away. She, she couldn't handle this. So she ran away. You don't know what the right answer is. You don't know exactly what happened. You never really find out. It seems likely that her dad killed her mom, but also maybe her mom just like couldn't handle this and wanted to be free of this whole lifestyle. Kind of like what Lou is doing now. You don't ever get an answer there, but in any event, her dad says he, she, he didn't kill her mom. Lou is in pain uh, and Jackie hears the screaming. So she comes to help Lou. Now this is where it gets weird, like magical realism. Jackie comes behind him and then she like grows into this giant. Like I guess the steroids are now making her into a giant or maybe a giant personality. And she like picks up uh, the dad with her giant hands and holds him on the ground. Uh, I assume in reality, she just kind of tackled him and held him down. I didn't love that this went into this weird like fantasy realm because the movie had been fairly grounded before that. So now the dad is being held down by giant Jackie. Um, Lou comes up with a gun and is about to shoot him in the face. She stuffs the gun down in his mouth, um, but then she doesn't do anything. She hears the cops coming and she leaves her dad there uh, in pain, but alive and her and Jackie go and flee. And they go and flee by like riding by Lou riding on Jackie's gigantic shoulders as they're running away. And then they go up into the clouds. It was a weird sequence. I didn't love it. Now, next scene, you see them driving. I think they're, they're driving to California. They mentioned uh, about going and starting out West, going to California, starting a new life. So they're on the road driving. And from the back seat, you see something moving. 
Lou pulls over. Jackie's asleep. Lou is driving. She goes to the back seat. She pulls this blanket up. And wouldn't you know it, her friend Daisy uh, is there. And she is still alive, but barely. She looks really bad. She has a gunshot in her face. She looks like she's barely alive. Now, you would think Lou might be excited about this. I don't know why she had a body in the back of her truck. Um, I guess she was going to dump it when she then got you know derailed and had to go uh, stop her dad. But she then decides that she is going to strangle Daisy because Daisy is well, the person that can connect Jackie to a crime. Jackie shot Daisy. Uh, presumably that would be uh, some sort of crime. And so she, to protect Jackie, to protect her love, she is going to kill Daisy, finish Daisy off, and then dump her out. So she, strang she strangles Daisy, pulls her out of the car, and you see the end sequence, the title sequence, as she's like dragging Daisy into the desert to like dump the body. And this all happens as the credits are rolling. Lou like gets, you know, like 10 feet from the car, gets tired, stops, to like have a smoke. You're wondering like, what are you doing? Like there's a dead body. Like, why would you stop? But no one's coming on this highway. I guess maybe she thinks she has enough time. Uh, it is kind of like this darkly humorous uh, scene. And also this strange scene because this is like the... Uh, I don't know, the, the, at least the second, maybe the third body that she's had to dump. And so Lou seems to be very, very good at this. Now, one thing I did like about this specific scene is that when her father was talking to her, he mentioned that she had some of him in her. And she mentioned, you know, I'm nothing like you. And her father just kind of like laughed at that. But this scene really showed that she does have something of her father in her. She is doing like the dark things that are necessary to protect the ones that she loves, which is basically what her father said. Like he is doing the things that have to happen to like give this life to her and her sister and to like protect the family. So it all came full circle. Um, Lou and Jackie, I guess are going to go off and have a great life. Maybe we'll see. I, I assume eventually those crimes will come back to get them, but maybe they can stay ahead of it. But that is love lies bleeding. Like I said, it does have love. It does have lies. It does have bleeding. I was kind of hoping it would be in that specific sequence, but it feels like it is love bleeding lies. But in any event, uh, I think you should watch it later. I think you should wait for it to come to streaming or on demand. But if you do check it out, let me know what you thought. Let me know what you liked and didn't like. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.